Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newest Korean builds for patch 13.11. With new core builds still being figured out, we believe it's important to deliver you guys solid and strong builds rather than focusing on overly exotic ones, at least for now. Now, let's move on to our first build of the patch. With the new update, Zeri is one of the strongest ADCs for solo and all she needs for that is the following setup. Start with the coal and potion and make sure your economy is empowered and you have some extra healing during the laning phase. For your first item, you want to rush Berserker's Greaves as fast as possible. This item will enable you to space adequately given any situation that you put yourself into. As for your items, you want to go for Trinity Force for its Spellblade passive and the overall stats, and then transition into Runin's Hurricane. To add to your tankiness, you want to go for that Titanic Hydra afterwards, and then build Lord Dominic's Regards and Bloodthirster. Combining those items will provide you with ample amounts of DPS and high survivability at the same time. Especially with the Buster Trinity Force and the changes to other items, this will most likely be the premier build when it comes to playing Zeri. Even Lucian might opt into Trinity Force as well, as it's a really good item for these types of characters. But what is the most important thing when it comes to playing Zeri? Her kit and gameplay are all about using space and terrain to your advantage. Staying close to the walls to escape any dangerous situations by just sliding into safety or just using these to catch somebody off guard will be the bread and butter of your champion. Given that your champion needs to get close, having that extra bit of tankiness won't hurt and spreading as much AoE damage as possible is really important. Runins and Titanic in unison with your ultimate will allow you to eat away at the enemy's HP bars in an instant. If you want to make this pick even more powerful, make sure you pair up with Lulu. Her ability to enhance her mobility and DPS is so beneficial. Naturally, having Flash and Ghost will add another resource that you can dip into for mobility as you see fit. All in all, the champion heavily scales with her ability to assess threats and create advantages for yourself with spacing. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Now that you have an idea and importance of spacing on your mind, it's time to move over to a champion who's been a great winner of this patch. Kogma is strong, not borderline broken, but still a solid and strong pick as he's even able to opt into tanky items. But let's talk about the runes first. For runes similar to Zeri, you want lethal tempo, triumph, bloodline, last stand, conditioning, overgrowth, and one attack speed, one adaptive, and one armor shard. As your starter item, you want coal as well, or if you need sustain, you can buy boots with pots. Kogma as a champion is completely reliant on spacing, even more so than Zeri. This is because he doesn't have an escape tool. To make up for the lack of mobility, we'll introduce you to some wild other items down the line. For your first item, you'll want to get Blade of the Rune King into Ginsu's Rage Blade. These two plus boots create your core item build and will be the foundation of all the damage that you'll need. After you completed these items, it's time to invest into defensive options, and here, you have a lot of choices. We're going to provide you with the default build so you can optimize as you see fit. That way you're not overwhelmed by the plentiful amount of different options. Transition into Anathema's Chains and put it on the enemy's Burst Mage or Assassin. Depending on what damage type you're facing, you can build Randuin's or even Abyssal Mask afterwards and then transition into a Titanic Hydra or Gargoyle Stone Plate. Don't forget that you're highly flexible after you've achieved your core build and can literally build whatever you're in need of to make sure that you can stay alive. You might be wondering as to why this build features not as many damage items, but the answer to that is pretty simple. Kogma's damage comes in spikes around his W cooldown. If he can maximize his uptime during the spell's active time, he'll greatly increase his damage output. If he doesn't have to worry about dying too much, he can obviously just frontline and continuously spit on his enemies without any issues. And as for your last tip, for late game, exchange your attack speed boots for sorcerer boots. The magic pen value will greatly outvalue the attack speed in the later stages of the game and will add some juicy bonus damage to your burst windows. Our next build comes for the support role and here we have kind of an exotic pick, but it's absolutely crazy what this build can do. Say hello to Ash and her beloved Echoes of Hylia. But let's first talk about the runes and what enables this build. For your runes, you want Hail of Blades, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter, with Fawn of Life and Revitalize with 1 Attack Speed, 1 Adaptive, and 1 Armor Shred. You want to start with the Spectral Sickle and a Pot, and you want to rush Echoes of Helia as fast as possible. Now, I'll explain to you how this build works and what it does. When you heal allies, you consume those shards to deal damage to the closest enemies. As all of you may know, Ash's auto attacks apply a slow, similar to Oliver's spells. 
This slow applies the Font of Life mark to an enemy, which then, upon being hit by an ally, triggers a shard of your mythic passive. Simply put, hit enemies so allies can deal more damage and heal themselves even more as they're hitting them as well. With this idea you are being a supportive champion, you obviously want to opt into different items of said kind. Being centered around your ultimate ability makes you want to go for lucidity boots right after your mythic and then into an imperial mandate. You'll have plenty of damage bonus for your allies, even though it may not seem that much as the damage you deal yourself. Most of the damage will come in your items passive. As you are healing your allies, you can even buy items such as an Arden and Staff of Flowing Water as it's really cheap and helps you and your allies alike. To make it easier for you, similar to what we did with Kogma, we're going to give you an example. Your core is Echoes of Hylia and Imperial Mandate. Afterwards, you can go for Kempunk Chainsaw, a Vigilant Wardstone, and Arden or Staff. The sequencing depends on what you need to do the most, and even items such as Black Cleaver can be a valid option, especially if your team needs some additional armor shred. So in this case, you're not buying the cleaver for your own damage output, but for your allies. Sounds a bit weird? Playing for other people? Yeah, it can't be League of Legends, right? But when you play it and get a certain spike, you'll see how good it can be. If you want to win more than 11,000 RP, you should check out the link in the description below. Sign up for the pro membership, gain access to premium masterclasses, and don't forget to drop your username in the comment section below. The next build is also a bit exotic, but truly a new approach of playing your fan favorite, Uction. Let's talk about the runes first. We want First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Sudden Impact, an Ingenious Hunter with 1 Attack Speed, 1 Adaptive, and 1 Health Shard. Depending on the matchup, you can also go for either Armor or Magic Resistance instead of Life. For items, you want to start with Coal and a Potion. Given your auto attacks, you'll gain more value from its passive as it's an on hit and therefore applies to your double hit. It may not seem like a massive amount, but it surely makes a difference if you look at it after going through an entire laning phase. Futures Market and First Strike are intended to accelerate your item breakpoints as your champion is already a lane bully. Getting more gold and reaching those breakpoints faster will turn you into an even heavier snowballing champion than you already are. In the item department, you want to go for Storm Razor, Berserker's Greaves, Gale Force, Collector, Static Shiv, and Rapid Fire Cannon. In case you're seeing that the enemy team is getting too many resistances and is rather tanky, you can exchange a Collector with an LDR. Don't forget, LDR also now boosts magical damage, which is helpful for your items and passive. If you're snowballing heavily, however, the Collector will make it even better, as you're synergizing with Sudden Impact. The amount of burst damage that you gain from your items, especially as you build Gale Force, will result in such a short and high burst window that your first strike gold is gonna be nuts. All the energized passives, including the way your champion is able to stack them up quite effectively, will turn Uction into a heavy hitter. For your information, energized passives focus on champions that hit infrequently. Basically, every once in a while, your next hit will do a massive amount of damage. This also synergizes incredibly well with Uction's kit, as he can swing by and go for a kill. He'll slow you down, burst you down, and even if you try to flash away, you have to think about his lovely ultimate of his. This is an ingenious build that is super fun and super good. Go give it a try and let us know how much you like it. For our last build, let's talk about Pantheon. This champion is not healthy to face, and with the current items in place, it's going to be even worse for you. Or good for you if you're playing him. Luckily, however, this Ghostblade item is adjusted, but it doesn't fundamentally change too much as to why you want to buy it. The primary reason to buy Ghostblade is mobility and some extra burst. Tuning it down was required as it was way too overstacked for one item. Regardless of that happening, we're still going to be strong with this. But before we hop into the build, let's talk about the runes. Go Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, and Double Adaptive Force with one Armor Shard. By jumping your enemy with an Empowered W, you'll gain quite a lot of Conqueror stacks and you'll stack up your passive towards getting another Empowered spell. To add even more onto this, you want to increase your ability haste with Lucidity Boots and then opt into either Prowler's Claw or a Black Cleaver. The choice here mainly depends on what you're facing. If you can burst your enemy, you'll instantly want to go for Claw, and if you need more tankiness and armor shred, go for Cleaver. After this, you'll build the one that you don't have yet, and then complete your build with Spear of Shojin and other defensive items. In this case, you can go for Death Stance or things such as Guardian Angel. However, let me tell you one thing about this champion. Pantheon is about lane dominance and translating it onto the map with your ultimate ability. With that all being said, we're at the end of our video and I want to thank you all so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll read some of the comments unless it hurts my feelings, then I stop reading it for the day. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.